Hello and welcome to Stem Cells in Your Face, where we try to break down complex science into language even I can understand. Oh, hello. I'm Kevin McCormack, the Communications Director at CERN, California's Stem Cell Agency. And today, we're going to be talking about using stem cells and gene therapy to treat disease. So how do you do that? Well, step one, make sure you have the right genes. This is the wrong type of genes. Whoa, good throw, Doc. Turns out Levi's are great for casual wear, but rubbish for curing deadly diseases. Now these are the genes we should be talking about. They are the instructions, if you like, for making proteins, the building blocks of every part of our body, from our teeth to our toenails. Now, the genes you inherit from your mum and dad help determine if you're going to be tall or short, have brown eyes or blue. It can even determine if you're going to be healthy or sick. That's where stem cells and gene therapy come into the picture. To help explain this, we turn to Dr. Donald Cohn from UCLA. Gene therapy is a group of techniques that have been developed in the last two decades or so to treat diseases, not by giving medicines that treat the symptoms, but to really try and get to the root cause. He's running a clinical trial using a stem cell and gene therapy combination to test a possible cure for sickle cell disease. That's a really nasty, painful condition caused by a single mistake or mutation in a gene. People with sickle cell have a whole variety of severe medical complications, recurrent pain crises, and ongoing organ damage and so people with sickle cell currently only live about 40 years. Sounds awful, doesn't it? It turns out that single DNA mutation changes the shape of our red blood cells, so that instead of being round and smooth and flowing easily, they become sickle-shaped and sticky, and they clump together, clogging up our blood vessels. The approach that we're looking at would be to take the patient's own bone marrow, isolate the stem cells, and in the laboratory put in the gene that we've been working on that prevents the red blood cells from sickling. So transplanting their own bone marrow back to them, in theory, should be safe. We don't have to worry about rejection. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Well, not so fast. The concerns in, in taking what works in the laboratory to clinic is always the unknowns. So one of the unknowns simply is, can we get enough bone marrow from an adult to make enough stem cells to transplant back to them? And then the big unknown is, how will they do with the transplant? Will they tolerate the, the treatment, and will it work? There are no guarantees, of course, but Don has a good track record in this area. Last year, he announced that he had used this same approach to effectively cure a fatal condition called severe combined immunodeficiency. It's also known as bubble baby disease. It's a condition that leaves newborn babies without a functioning immune system. But even as they're trying this approach, the team are already exploring other techniques. One is using something called a zinc finger nuclease. Don't you love that name? It's essentially a pair of molecular scissors that the team is going to use to precisely snip out the defect in the sickle cell gene. You can then add in the correction and patch it all up. This is fascinating work, but it's more than that. It's also opening the door to a whole new kind of medicine and inspiring real hope in people with incurable genetic diseases. And that is stem cells in your face. See you next time. Still here? <laughs> Step one. Get the genes out from underneath the needle. Okay, yeah. Make sure you have the right genes. <laughs> Hello and welcome. That's the shape of our rod. Take 13. Take 427. Whoa. Well, not so fast. That was a bit sloppy. Whoa, good throw, Doc. Not those genes. It's over, you know. <laughs>